Neighbor, a new game, a new quick look, maybe possibly a new series. Um, I think this released a few days ago. Didn't even notice it really. I only read it on Twitter, so we'll start. Since apparently, what I did read of it, it's a pretty good game. And it only recently released on the Western market, so it's an old Japanese game. Translated for the first time. It was a perfectly ordinary apartment. Two bedrooms for just under 80,000 yen a month. Personally, I felt it was a little pricey for a unit in a relatively suburban neighborhood, but I let it go after a while. Can't have everything, I thought. It was in a good location with plenty of stores in the area, that's always important. The building itself was under a decade old, and both the interior and exterior were maintained quite well. Under a decade. That's really fucking good, actually. The perfect home office for a 30 something single woman, I'd say. Oh. So I'm a woman again. <laughs> As usual with games. I play female. Once the movers left, I spent the next few hours unpacking, and by the time I was done, the sun had nearly set. The view from the balcony was little more than a vacant lot, so I decided the curtains could wait until tomorrow. What's another day, right? Okay, so at this point, you might be kind of bored. Maybe you have the right to be, but Neighbor is a horror game. And good horror begins boring, right? It begins in a normal setting and then it spirals downwards fast and hard. So let's hope for the best here. My utilities were already set up, so I decided I'd swing by and introduce myself to my new neighbors before grabbing a slightly early dinner. My apartment, number 201, was located in a four-story building. There were two sets of stairs, one right outside my apartment and one at the opposite end of the hall, next to apartment 206. I wonder if this is important. Are there any choices in this game? I don't know. Why would I? I'm only the dude playing this game. There was a parking lot for residents out front, as well as a separate building where the aging landlady lived. According to her, this land used to be a rice field until they paved it over to build the complex. She even showed me the old electric cultivator gathering dust out behind her house. As far as retirement income though, I could easily see why she'd made the switch. Given the small size of the complex, proper social etiquette likely dictated that I ought to go and greet every single resident, but that was a bit old fashioned for my tastes. Instead, I decided I'd limit myself to the neighbors directly sharing walls and ceiling and floor with me, so four units I guess? as well as the landlady herself. I grabbed their gifts and walked out. My last apartment was right in the middle of downtown, and I never even saw my neighbors when I lived there. No need to go all out, I figured. I stepped outside and was immediately greeted by the last lingering rays of the setting sun, stretching out over my path. Using my brand new key, I carefully locked the door, then walked over to apartment 202. I desperately hope that this game has some action before I have to finish this quick look because I don't want to upload 30 minutes of me just doing a daily routine of a woman. I pressed the button on the intercom and heard a faint ringing sound from inside. A gentle breeze brushed past as I waited for a response, but the silence lingered. Maybe they are not home right now, I thought. Just in case they didn't hear, I gave the button one more push. Again, I heard a faint ringing sound from the other side of the metal door. Then it stopped. I waited. No response. Evidently, no one was around. I considered simply leaving their gift hanging from the doorknob, but ultimately decided against it. Wouldn't want to risk freaking them out with an unwanted present from a mystery sender. Instead, I turned and made for the stairs. But before I could take another step, I heard a soft sound behind me. Bleh. Oh. It actually is something slightly creepy. It sounded like intercom static. Maybe my neighbor had finally picked up. I turned back and stood in front of the intercom camera. Oh. Okay, so this game has voice acting. <laughs> Didn't even know that. Um, okay, we are... Kai Yuki or Yuki Kai? I guess it depends on how you want to... Order the names. Couldn't hurt to introduce myself. Yes. More static though. 
Maybe this thing is broken and he doesn't know? After a brief blip of static, I heard them hang up. But no one came to the door. That's weird. Unsure what to do, I paused there for a moment. Then the doorknob turned. Apparently they were home after all. Why did it take them so long to answer the intercom or go to the door? Well, a reply would have been nice. Sheesh, I thought to myself. But just as I got their gift ready... The doorknob suddenly began to jerk in all directions, where moments before it had been perfectly still. Instantly, a chill shot down my spine. Holding the gift, I took off running to the stairs. Behind me, the creak of the opening door grated on my eardrums. Oh shit. As I rounded the corner, I caught one final glimpse of the door to 202, and it sent goosebumps pricking up my arms. Is it a zombie? There was a ghostly pale head. Oh, there it is. Do I have a mouse cursor? I hope it's visible on the recording. There's the hand, just in case you missed it. Um, let's hide the mouse cursor again. There was a ghostly pale hand reaching out from the door, but it retracted a split second later, immediately followed by the low clunk of the door shutting once more. Yeah, that's that's what I want to know. I'd go full nanny at that as well. I collapsed onto the stairs, my legs quaking. For a moment I debated heading up the, to the third floor, but after a moment of thought, I carefully crawled my way back down the hall. Slowly, I peered around the corner at the door to apartment 202. It was firmly closed. It was then that I realized I had probably just made a colossal ass of myself. <laughs> I don't know it, if it's... I mean, if they intend to be creepy and weird you out and you react that way, why would it make you an ass out of yourself? Still, I had absolutely no intention of going back and giving it another shot. Just in case it's a real monster, of course. And just like that we continue with the other apartments? Man, I would be so freaked out, I think I would probably move home again. <laughs> Apartment 301 was occupied by a male resident. As perhaps expected of a single bachelor, the young man appeared at the door in scruffy attire. Regardless, I was relieved to meet a normal person for once. For once. It's almost as if this whole apartment complex was full of monsters. It was one bad experience. Says the dude that wanted to move out. He looked to be a bit younger than I was. He scratched his head and blinked sleepily at me. Yeah, sumimasen, yuki des. Being a freelancer myself, I was in no position to judge him for keeping a weird sleep schedule. Oh, okay, yeah, of course, it's evening, right? And apparently he slept, he looked sleepily. He didn't look too thrilled about being awake and I felt guilty for disturbing him. Maybe he is a zombie after all, or a vampire. They are uh, asleep during the day? I hope the voices are loud enough. You know what? Let me let me check. Oh my god, that's not professional at all. So I turn up the master volume and everything else. I turn down. Oh look! Look at this voice. It's to the max. Okay, maybe this will help. <laughs> I won't edit this out. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's too lazy. So he's a student. He's in college. Yes. He went on to explain that his graduate school was part of a hard sciences focused university located in the suburbs about a 30 minute drive away. On first impression he seemed nice, though perhaps uninterested in maintaining his, his appearance, if his black ripped glasses and sweatpants were any indication. Do you have a problem with glasses like that? Why would that... <laughs> Why would this mean he is uninterested in maintaining his appearance, as you put it? Then again, presentability isn't exactly the point of pajamas. <laughs> Still, compared to the fright I just had at 202, I could forgive even the most outlandish of attire. Yeah, what do you do? Oh. Oh, she so she really needs a home office, I guess. Okay. Ah, 
あれ僕も論文を書くときはそうですしここは壁も床も天井も分厚いから Yeah, it's not like we're in America where the walls are made of paper. Damn, Japanese are so kind and polite. As I spoke, I held out this, his gift a small carton of laundry detergent. I had chosen to play it safe with something boring and practical. Okay, now this is something I probably would never receive or gift in Germany. <laughs> laundry detergent. To a neighbor. I think it could even be considered an insult over here. You'd mostly gift、um, something to cook or something to eat or something. That's kind of weird, but maybe it's normal in Japan? I don't know. The man whose name was Hizamatsu Daiko, if the label on him, the package sitting by the door was any indication. Oh, he's a lazy knob, isn't he? <laughs> Took it from me with a sleepy half smile. <laughs> For a young guy, he seemed to have a firm grasp of social etiquette. This came as a huge relief. Now that I'd confirmed at least one of my neighbors to be a reasonable individual, I decided it was time to get going. Ah, oh, I'm Hisamatsu. I'm going to call you to call you. I'm going to call you to call you. I'm going to call you to call you. Hit me up, huh? Oh, yeah. I'm going to call you. So, you really don't want to ask him about the weird neighbor in 202 that's just a ghostly hand with static coming out of the intercom? Have you even tried the intercom in this apartment? Maybe it's a known problem, I don't know. I realized he'd started to say something, so I stopped and turned back. Maybe what he wanted to say actually there was, oh yeah, don't disturb the resident in 202, it's a freaking monster and it will eat you if you go there. But never mind that, I'll just go back to my thesis. With that, our conversation came to an end and the heavy iron door clunked shut. I didn't like how it had ended, though. Judging from the look on his face, there'd been something else on the tip of his tongue. Probably what I said. No sense fretting over things outside my control. Shifting the remaining gifts in my arms, I headed for the stairs once more. Was he about to ask me out to dinner or something? <laughs> oh, she would have liked that. Oh my god. Kai, you little. Man. Shaking the silly thought from my mind, I headed down the stairs, my footsteps echoing off the walls. I wonder how long this game is. Horror games usually aren't too long. But sometimes, if you have some. Um, background information about the characters or a real fight between protagonist and monster can drag on. I don't know how this game goes. Thankfully, the Ikuta family in apartment 101 seemed perfectly ordinary. I was greeted with a light, pleasant scent as the mother of the household poked her head out from the door. Whoa. She doesn't seem too pleased about that, does she? Yes, God, they all know. They all know and they don't tell you. What's that about? She smiled stiffly, her face pale, ignoring the yellow flag in my mind. I held up her gift. God, I love the Japanese flag system. <laughs> Yeah, you shouldn't have. You'll be dead soon, anyway. Is this what you want to say, maybe? Repeating what I told the last neighbor, I held out the detergent. Just then, a pair of little hands shot out from behind her and grabbed it. It's a zombie kid! Hey, she didn't say sweetheart in Japanese. She only said hi. What's that all about, translator? That's more like it. Ten points for not calling me ma'am. Wait, didn't she call your aunt? Literally? Let's take a look back. Do I have to... Oh, shit. I want a voice. Um. Oni, Oni chan. Okay, not, not Oba san, which I guess would have been the ma'am equivalent. So she called her big sister. Okay. Just in case you didn't know, I'm really fluent in Japanese. <laughs> 
つみちゃんか。Oh, God, いくつ？六歳。小学生かな。四月からなの。一年生か。お嬢さんしっかりしてますね。ええ。まあ。What's wrong with the mother? Mutsumi's mother looked slightly relieved that the conversation had shifted focus to her daughter. Maybe she. Oh, sorry, my mouse. Maybe she had her guard up answering the door. She didn't know me after all. At least, that was what I decided to tell myself. Yeah, I immediately forgot that she was weirded out about me moving up. upstairs, right? Hey, Miss Lady, why do you live next to the creepy monster? Nani? Oh, God. Because everyone moves away. Up there, after a while, they all move away. Oh, she's not supposed to say that, apparently. The woman's shrill voice rang out through the corridor. I looked up sharply to find her white as a sheet, her lip trembling. Okay, that's the second nanny right here, isn't it? Something must have set off Mama Bear, I thought to myself. Bevel though I was. I could take a hint. It was time for me to go. Yeah, don't mind me. I'll be dead soon anyway. I could practically see the relief written all over her face. I waved goodbye and stepped back. Oh, that's cute. Bye bye, Mutsumi chan. Her little voice was drowned out by the heavy clunk of the door slamming in my face. Wow. Why did Ikuta san seem so in seem to instantly dislike me? I only just got here. Surely I hadn't done anything to warrant that kind of attitude? I thought about it for a bit, then shrugged it off. As you do, call it intuition or a small voice in the back of my head. But something told me I'd understand someday. For a moment, I simply stared down at the two remaining cartons of detergent in my arms. Then I decided it was time to pay my landlady a visit. Of course, one of these、uh, laundry detergent things is for the monster. Walking out of the apartment building, I cut across the parking lot and headed to the standalone building that served as the landlady's personal abode. In contrast to the main building, the landlady's house was fairly old and outfitted with a large garden. According to my real estate agent, most of the houses in this area belonged to rice farmers turned millionaires after the property value skyrocketed. Wow! Wow! They told me it wasn't altogether uncommon to see apartment buildings constructed right next to the landowner's home. Adjusting my grip on the two remaining cartons of laundry detergent, I walked up to the old faded front door and rang the doorbell. Hi. Oh God, it's an old lady, all right. An elegant feminine voice answered. Yep, ah, Yuki this. Hi, hi, Yuki san, ne? Now, can you open the door? The words had scarcely left her lips when the front door slid open, and there she was, my landlady. The last time I'd seen her was during the lease signing a few days prior. Her name was Inamoto-san, and I estimated her to be around the same age as my own mother. Her face lit up as soon as she spotted me. So, now, obviously, this is just speculation, but everyone seems to know about this monster in the apartment complex. So she has to know as well, right? She's the landlady. She has to know. It's her building. So, why is this old lady so nice to us, even though she knows that she's kind of doomed us? Is the ghost related to her? Is she working with the ghost? Am I like a sacrifice or something? Yeah. Is this a weird cult? I had a fondness for these sort of polite exchanges, Japanese humility at its finest. Oh, I like it too, actually. Perhaps detergent wasn't the most apt gift for my new landlady. Ah,、uh, you could go more wrong, I think. 
Still, in my experience, women tended to appreciate practical gifts like these, and older women especially. Sure enough, Inamoto-san smiled warmly and took the carton from my hand. That's really fucking polite, isn't it? It's only laundry detergent. <laughs> that left me with just one carton. I thought back to my experience with apartment 202. Surely the landlady ought to know what sort of person lives there, I thought. Yes, who? Next door? No one lives there. You don't even have a next door. Dun dun dun. There is no apartment 202. I saw her face twitch. She was clearly rattled by my question. Oh, now it's getting hotter. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm supposed to believe you after what I've seen? Nani? <laughs> Why do you sound so harsh suddenly? Inamoto-san? What, what, what's that her name? There was an obvious pause in her answer. But at this point, I was too panicked to care. I love when visual novels do this, if they play with text and presentation to be more creepy and just give you more of a sense of unease and make something stand out more. Halai, I try to believe, did this as well, with some sentences in color or um, centered and stuff. If no one lived there, then how would you explain the intercom static? I'd rather go for the creepy pale hand, but okay, if the static is what's bothering you, be my guest. The rattling doorknob. The door opening. The fucking hand. Yes, the hand. Oh, the point it would be your job to say you know what i've been there earlier i think i saw someone there you have the spare key can we go over there and just check if there's really no squatter in there i'm slightly worried seeing as i'm the person living next to them can we please do that we can even call the police if you want but no as a horror game protagonist of course our answer is <laughs> And ominous, I saw the door open. Yeah, of course that's not possible. Her smile was stiff, her voice shaky. What was she hiding in there? Oh, if you know something and you notice that the jig is almost com completely up, it's not completely empty, it's... The jig is completely up. She got you, Haruko. She saw the hand. Try thinking of a new lie. Oh my god. Our protagonist actually is sensible and smart. I like this game. But I don't want to. I'm... Positively surprised by this. Wow! She even got the whole safe route thing, you know? Going there. There's no way she can just decline that, can she? Oh, wait a second. Why would you need the master key when you told us earlier that you have the key for the apartment? Hmm? Maybe you don't actually have the key and you just lied to us. I wonder if Kai will pick up on that. I was desperate. I needed to verify with my own two eyes. Because I knew what I had seen. A violently rattling doorknob. A door that opened on its own. And then... A single hand. After a moment, Inamoto-san returned, master key in hand. She seemed rather tense. That said, given the nature of my claim, I couldn't blame her. Yeah. You know, Kai, people have been avoiding this topic all day. 
why would you try to sympathize with the one person who clearly tried to lie to you? Hmm. I knew I hadn't been seeing things, and yet I couldn't help but apologize anyway. Somehow it just didn't feel real. I followed Inamoto-san back up the staircase from where I had come. At the landing, we promptly arrived at my apartment. There, I briefly stepped inside to drop off the extra carton of detergent. After all, I wouldn't be needing it if no one actually lived next door. With that off my hands, I stepped back out to the hall, and together we walked a handful more steps to apartment 202. To my relief, the door was firmly closed. Oh god, she turned the key in the lock and moments later, the door swung open with a loud, deep creak. Why? Why do I have to take a look? Go on, go in this apartment you're so afraid of and make sure it's safe. It's not my job as landlady to do it. How many bodies will we find? I peered past her into the apartment and froze. It's completely empty. Yes, it was empty. <laughs> the wallpaper was brand new and the floor was coated in a thin layer of dust. It was blatantly clear that no one had set foot in here in quite some time, much less lived there. I couldn't believe it. It made no sense. Yeah, maybe they're just hiding somewhere? Oh, remember earlier when she said... Um, where is it? Alright, I'll open the door now so every monster in there better hide now. That's what I think. That's what I think this was. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. Personal family reasons. So the reason why she lets someone move in next door to sacrifice them is, and now prediction time is coming up, because it's a long dead son that's haunting this apartment and he needs human sacrifices to be able to survive? Maybe he's not dead, maybe he's just a monster, I don't know, but I guess the monster's related to her and that's why she's luring people in. And some people more or less know about the whole thing, but she's giving them... I don't know, free rent or something? I don't know. Just so they don't have to die? And they're all keeping up the facade of a normal apartment complex? But you'd think that the police would be up on it then. Oh, I don't know. Uh. Before I could begin to process what I'd seen, of course, we have more than enough time to process what we've seen, Inamoto-san closed the door and locked it up tight. Apartment 202 was now completely and undeniably empty. Wrong. It is pretty, pretty much still a shut room we can't look in, since you didn't see everything, you just saw the entranceway, didn't you? Yes, we know what we saw. I mumbled pathetically to myself as Inamoto-san slipped past me. Sure, if you tell me now that everyone has seen this that, have mo that has moved in before, I might believe you. Of course. I sincerely hope not, I wanted to say. But Inamoto-san had already vanished around the corner and down the stairs. That's impolite. And rather rude. Okay, so we just had a setup for for the, the game, basically. I'll continue for a little bit and then we'll stop for now. The diner was a five-minute drive away. I should have been excited to explore my new neighborhood, but instead I was utterly miserable. Pushing my cold, half-eaten Hamburg steak around on my plate, I contemplated everything that had happened this evening. No, oh, pardon me. For the briefest of moments, out of the corner of my eye, as I rounded that corner, I had seen it. A hand reaching out from the gap in the open door. The detail that stuck with me most was how deathly pale it had looked, and what were they reaching for exactly? And even supposing the hand had merely been a hallucination on my part, how would that explain the doorknob? Surely I couldn't have hallucinated the door jiggling around like that. And yet, the apartment beyond that door was completely deserted. If someone had come to the door earlier, 
Then there should have been footprints in the dust to prove it, but there weren't. I glanced out the window to find the sunset fading into dusk and suddenly remembered that my windows at home still didn't have any curtains. Just a few hours prior I told myself it could wait until tomorrow, but after today's little scare, I was cursing myself for not thinking ahead. I checked the time displayed on my phone, 6.16pm. I'd best get a move on if I wanted to find some place that would sell me curtains. Sure, maybe I was just paranoid, but as it turned out, sometimes a single strip of fabric could mean a world of difference. It was human nature to conceal the darkness because the darkness played host to all of our most primitive fears. I picked up my bill from where it lay at the edge of the table and set my fork down on my unfinished plate, a loaf as I was to waste food. Today would simply have to be an exception. Oh my god, this kind of scared me. As I went to grab my phone off the table, however, it began to buzz quietly, LED light blinking. The name Yuki Shuku was displayed on screen. I quickly answered, who's this now? Oh. Of course, it's our name, Yuki. <laughs> I could hear my little sister's usual easygoing tone. Today,仕事が終わらなくて、別にいいよ。荷物なんて大して Oh god, I'd love some chocolates right now. Shuku suddenly lowered her voice and I could practically hear her smirking on the other end of the phone. Oh god, are there ghost stories going on around this apartment? Nani? That's the third one. <laughs> My heart skipped a beat. Ever since we were young, Shuku always had a strong sense of intuition, and somehow I had a bad feeling about this. What? So she didn't even have any ghost stories she read up on the internet? It was just her intuition that the apartment was a bad one? Talk about being creepy, little sister. But she hung up before I could stop her. Man, the story of my life. Something about the amusement in her voice didn't sit right with me. I don't know, just shrug it off. I pondered it for a moment, but quickly realized it was getting nowhere fast. Stuffing my phone in my pocket, I promptly took my bill up to the register. As it turned out, the hardware store was actually just a short walk from the diner. Sorry, I just can't stop with this game, I know this will be a longer quick look, but still. Plus, and as an added bonus, I discovered that the grocery store next door stayed open pretty late most days. I could always hunt around for a cheaper store later on, but for now, all my shopping needs were met. I picked out a nice set of curtains at the hardware store, plus a few odds and ends, and by the time I made it home, it was pitch dark outside. That said, living out here away from the big city, the moon and stars were actually quite visible, not to mention the parking lot security lights were pretty bright too. Before I knew it, I was standing back in front of the door to 201, both hands weighed down with shopping bags. Now just make sure not to confuse the doors and suddenly open the wrong one. <laughs> Taking care not to glance over at apartment 202, I slid my key into the deadbolt, but it wouldn't turn. Nani the fuck? For a moment I thought I might have used my old key by mistake, but I hadn't brought it with me, and my car keys were too distinctive for anyone to mix up. I reinserted the key and tried again. No dice! Wait, aren't the apartments numbered or something? Surely I wasn't that out of it. Just in case, I looked up to check the number on the door. Then I froze. Oh god, she actually did confuse them? Dimly, my brain registered the light flutter of my shopping bags as they hit the floor. <laughs> 202. Oh my god, I fucking called it even. That's amazing. It's. It's. 
one part about this is amazing, the other part was too predictable and too... too much set in horror ways, I think. I was standing in front of apartment 202. Panicked, I grabbed my bags, yanked my key out of the lock and looked back in the direction I had come. Sure enough, my apartment was one door down. I was sure I'd stopped at the first door after I turned the corner. Fear welling up in me, I hurried over to 201 and put my key in the lock, hands shaking. And just then I see that this was 202 as well. But this time the cylinder turned without a hitch. Okay. Okay. Too terrified to look down the hall, I darted inside and looked, locked the door behind me. And then I bolted the chain for good measure. My new curtains were a light shade of beige, designed to help brighten up the room. Admittedly, I would have preferred blackout curtains, but at this point, I'd have settled for anything. These beige curtains had two layers. Beneath the thin colored fabric was a set of lace panels. As I set about hanging them up over the living room window, I thought back on the day's events. I could see the shadowy balcony outside beyond the glass, separated from the one next door by a privacy screen that someone could easily break through in the event of an emergency. I kept my gaze averted, however. In the back of my mind, I kept worrying some formless entity was going to come creeping out of apartment 202 onto my balcony. I felt a bit better once I finished hanging the living room curtains. But the hardest part was yet to come. The living room and bedroom were divided by a single sliding partition, and my bedroom shared a wall with 202. Somehow it felt... different in there. It had to be. After all, nothing had felt off when I went in there this morning. If only I hadn't seen... that. The pale hand flashed through my mind again. Hastily, I shook the thought away. Forget it. I knew I'd never be able to stay here if I kept dwelling on it. I shot a quick glance at the balcony. A single pane of glass was all that separated me from that unsettling darkness. Why are you so afraid of the dark? And judging by the background we currently have, you haven't even turned any lights on inside. Why was I letting myself get so worked up over some curtains? It's really weird, isn't it? The whole curtain thing. I don't know. Is she afraid of the night or something? Silently reassuring myself, I set about hanging up the lace. My arms were starting to get tired from continually reaching up, but there was no time to complain. I needed to get this over with ASAP. Next, I gra grabbed the beige fabric and looked back up at the curtain rod. The mindless busywork was beginning to help me forget my anxiety. Once I finished hanging up the first half, I took the second half out of the bag. And then there it was. A severed head inside it. Almost done. Unfolding the curtains, I grabbed one hook and reached up. And then... Bam. For a second, I didn't know where the sound was coming from. Until it happened a second time. My whole apartment shook. I jumped away from the window, leaving the curtain hanging limply by one hook. That's the fourth nanny! <laughs> the window pane was visibly shaking from external impact. Of course, it might be more or less nannies, but... There are several nannies in this game, I think. Beyond the delicate lace, the balcony still seemed as empty as ever. Fearfully, I peered out through the curtains. Sure enough, no one was there. At this, I felt both relieved and unnerved. Who hit my window then? I needed to know, but I didn't want to find out. Wrestling with my conflicted emotions, I let my gaze wander over the dark void of the balcony. And there I found my answer. The hand is back. I wanted to scream, but it felt like there was a cork in my throat, keeping my voice the other way. There it was, on the railing between my balcony and the next. A bony hand clung to the privacy screen, so pale it practically glowed in the dark. <laughs> it slid along the edge of the partition until it vanished from sight, a little more than a few seconds. <coughs> and yet those seconds felt like hours, right up to the moment I screamed. And I think that's the perfect time to put a stop to this. Oh god, it seems like a really 
so far kind of corny horror story kind of kind of basic but I do like me some basic horror stories sometimes and I like the use of music and font and stuff and I'll definitely continue this oh it's chapter 4 wow this game has chapters I didn't even know it doesn't tell you um, so I'll continue this maybe before I do Shibuya 4 to 8 maybe after I don't know Omineko should be finished soon. Maybe I'll take a break in between the answer arc and the question arc. You don't care, do you? As long as I continue my Friday series, it seems like no one really cares about this channel. Not even me. Still, that was Neighbor. It's 12 euro? With a 10% sale right now, since it launched? Make sure to grab it. I think it's only about 8 or 9 hours long or something, from what I've seen in the reviews. I only glanced over them to see how long this game would be. So, might not be worth it. It might be, if you like visual novels, if you want to support developers bringing older games to the Western market. I always do. Thank you for watching. Bye. And don't be afraid of the bony pale hand. <laughs>